So I just wanted to help some people better understand when you're dynoing a vehicle, why you dyno, how you dyno, and what you dyno, since there seems to be some mild controversy and especially some YouTubers out there. Not talking about Julian who dynoed, but some big mouthpiece that works for one of the tuners that really doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. But anyway, <laughs> so when you dyno a vehicle, you know, this is what Julian was talking about. He said his car only made 656 rear wheel horsepower, okay? which you're looking at a peak number, but there's other things to look at and take into consideration when you're dynoing a vehicle. So they sent me their dyno run file, so I just wanted to show you. This pool here, where you had a peak of 646 horsepower, that was a fifth gear dyno. So any dyno run that's done is done in seventh gear, which is your one-to-one -one ratio. As far as when you're trying to calculate true horsepower, you want to calculate based off a one-to-one -one gear ratio. If you got an old 4R70, you know, that's got a one-to-one -one in third gear, you use that. If it's a 6R80, the one-to-one -one is in fourth gear and you use that. In this particular transmission, the 10 speed, the 10R80, seventh gear is one-to-one. -one. Uh, the problem is this particular tune by Whipple in a stage one kit has a, I believe, 155 mile an hour speed limiter. The stage two kit, I believe it's either 180 or 220, so you can get a little bit more, but we had the same issue hitting the speed limiter in our stage two car. But every gear that you drop in dyno costs you horsepower. And I'm gonna just kind of show you that so you guys understand. So if you look at his lower, if, if you look at his lower dyno number, and I'm, I'm gonna come out here where you can kind of see the torque and power difference. If you look at a fifth gear dyno, you see 494 foot pounds of torque. However, in sixth gear, you see 524 foot pounds of torque. So it's 30 foot pounds higher. If you go here where the peak is, you've got 546 versus 514. Again, about 30 foot pounds of torque. So just from going from fifth gear to sixth gear, uh, and the reason that they dynoed in fifth gear on the stock dyno originally is because the factory speed limiter, you can't go above fifth gear on the dyno on these cars, depending on the gear ratio that you have and get a full pull out of it. So that's why they started their basis off of fifth gear dyno. However, Whipple said, well, your speed limiter is now raised so you can dyno in sixth gear because originally he thought he was only making 646 wheel horsepower. Well, you need to dyno the car in sixth gear. So they did dyno it in sixth gear uh, without hitting the limiter. You have to get, to get a full pull, you're going to need that. Now, what you have to take into account, you go out here before you have your little dip. This little dip, you don't see it in fifth gear, okay? So you've, without having data logs, you're not going to be able to interpret all the data 100%, but you get a pretty good idea through here, okay? You're up 30 horsepower, 30 horsepower. It starts to pull a little bit here. You're about a 20 horsepower difference. Now up here around 6,900, it takes a little bit of a dip, and now you're only seeing about a 10, 11 horsepower difference. But uh, if you, cars don't change how a car pulls because of the gear ratio, it's simply the car either here probably pulled a little bit of timing or something like that, which is gonna pull down a little bit of horsepower. But essentially you're up 20 horsepower from fifth gear until sixth gear. So you're going from 627 to 647 at this point. Now your peak was 646 wheel. So if you got another 20 horsepower, well now you're making 665 wheel, we'll call it 1920, but we'll call it 666. This car really made 665, 666, if, or 665, 666, if it wasn't pulling any timing, uh, which more than likely that's what happened because you don't see that dip like that in here. So you're about a 19, 20 horsepower difference, but that's still in sixth gear. So they did some E30 pulls as well, and I'm going to pull those up and show those to you as well. So we go to our download file. These are what they pulled for me. So here's your sixth gear pull on E30, okay? And again, you shouldn't have to run E30 in the car to make the power, but if you're seeing full timing, the car is going to make the power. Because if you look here, again, you don't see that huge dip like you saw here. So, um, the next thing I'm going to show you, I want to take these two runs out, and I just want to show you the same thing happens in each run. Close selected, and then we're going to close the other, uh, we're going to close the 93 octane run here. So we're going to compare the two E30s, because what they did, they did do a run in seventh gear, but you're going to hit the speed limiter. But I still want to show you the same factors here, okay? 
So let's, uh, let's uncheck this. So here you go again. So this is a sixth to seventh gear on E30. And if you look at the curve again through here, like torque, you're up 34 foot pounds of torque here, uh, up here at peak. If you look, you're up 538 to 589. You're up 50 foot pounds of torque. So your torque number, you're getting your full torque. So here, when you look at horsepower early in the run, and we compare the horsepower, you're 519 and 530. Sorry, I was looking at the uh, 551 to 588. So around here at your peak and your torque, 589, 551, you're up about 38 foot pounds of torque. When you look at horsepower here, 494, 527, you're up about 33 rear wheel horsepower. If you remember, when we looked at the fifth to sixth gear pull on 93 octane, again, you're seeing about the same thing. You were seeing in this mid range, you were seeing right at a 30 wheel horsepower. And then off the peak, if you remember, you were seeing about a 20 horsepower difference. And that same thing's going to correlate here. Again, and I don't know if this is a hot pull, but as you see, the curve drops a little bit more here than it does here. Again, I don't have the dyno run, the data logs, but probably pulling a little bit of timing. But based off this pull, you saw a peak here of 683. However, if you were able to pull that out, you'd be making, you know, 703 roughly on E30. Again, more than enough. But what you want to look at here, if we go back, if we close selected, and let's close this run. So now you understand every gear is about 20 wheel peak horsepower, not five or 10 like some people talk about that don't really know what they're talking about, some mouthpieces, but you know, we'll, we'll leave that at that. So we're going to go back to the fifth gear pool and the sixth gear pool. And it would have been nice if they would have done a seventh gear pool on the pump gas, but they didn't, they didn't think about that, you know. But again, so if you're looking at where you're probably, if you didn't have the timing pulling here, you're about six, 666 wheel. Now, you had another 20 horsepower, you're at 686 wheel if you pulled this thing in seventh gear. And I think they're going to get it back on the dyno and do that again next week, but that is spot on what you should be. But something else that you're not taking into account is drag radios. Drag radios rob horsepower. On our 1200 wheel Mustang, just from going from a 275 Radial Pro to a street tire was 70 horsepower. Now, on a car at this horsepower level, it's not going to be 70 wheel horsepower, but it's a minimum of five. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more like eight to 10 horsepower because this is a street SS. It's a little bit harder tire, but the drag radial definitely, definitely is going to run up. But when they put this car back on the dyno uh, next week, I'm going to guess on this six gear pull, you're going to see a peak, as long as it's not pulling timing, you're going to see a peak of about 670 to 680 on street tires, okay? And once you, uh, once you pull the seventh gear, you're probably going to see in this range, you're going to see it up until they hit the limiter about 6,400. You're going to see it up around 30 here, and you'll see it start to drop to about 20 when it peaks off, which means that you're probably making 690 to 700 on street tires on pump gas with this stage one setup. And I'm sure some other people will get out there and dyno the cars and do things like that, but I just wanted to make sure people understand how a dyno works, how it changes horsepower numbers, but your one-to-one -one gear ratio is what we use for everything. And, and just for, I think I may have some of my own dyno runs on here. You know, I heard some people talking about, you know, shops bogusing numbers, and we don't, we don't bogus any numbers. We don't have a reason to bogus any numbers. Um, so, uh, here is, let's see, my six gear pull with boostane, one pulley down, and the seventh gear pull with boostane, one pulley down. And you're going to see the same thing. So we made a peak of 776 or 770 wheel, okay? But if you look at this other graph where we pulled it in seventh gear, we hit the speed limiter at about 7,100. But as you can see in here, we, we retightened the, 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 the straps down because we were getting a little bit of chatter on the dyno. But if you could, as you can see here, right in this range here, 704 to 751, where we've got a nice flat curve, we're actually up 47 wheel just from a sixth gear to a seventh gear dyno. Now, this isn't what numbers Whipple's claiming, but this is us putting one smaller pulley on the car and 
throwing some boo stain in there and doing two pulls, both with boo stain, both with the smaller pulley. And just going from sixth to seventh gear, your peak torque, which is around 625 or 587, jumps all the way to 625. You pick up 42 foot pounds of torque simply by changing the gear. And again, up in here, you're seeing around a 40 to 50 wheel horse difference. Just, you know, we had a little chatter on there, but your, your 50 could be 45, 48, something like that. And you did have a little spike at the end here. So I don't really look at that. You know, I, I, I'd say on this, we were probably more, you know, somewhere around the 760-ish or so, because uh, you get a little bit of spike, 760 maybe versus 770. But when you add on that 50 wheel, again, you're making around 810 to 820 wheel. And this is, I think our correction, this is STD, your SAE is gonna change that. But regardless, this is how a dyno works. This is how numbers are manipulated. Um, and when I say manipulated, you have to figure a one-to-one -one gear ratio when you're talking about doing a dyno graph to get your true numbers on what a manufacturer claims.